lots of very compelling themes today. Uh, we've got how to use innovation for social good. We've got how do you prepare professionals for the future of work. We've got how do you improve patient outcomes and health worldwide. Good news, there's a solution to all of these, and that solution is video games. Um, hi, I'm Sam Glassenberg. I've spent my career in the video games industry. I started out at LucasArts making Star Wars games. Um, after that, I moved on to Microsoft. My job, yeah, was to predict and plan the next 10 years of video game graphics technology. So, we could go from this, which was the best looking video game character you had in 2001, looks very computer generated, to this. Right? This is an interactive character in today's video games. Go to Best Buy, $50, Call of Duty, World War II. They actually make this here in LA. Um, I purchase it. There's dozens of soldiers on screen at once. Explosions, animations. And then I zoom in to the eye of one of the characters on screen. This is the level of detail that we are able to achieve in a modern video game. Now, let's talk about healthcare. Let's go <laughs> to the Best simulation center in the Los Angeles area. We will sit down in front of a $250,000 ophthalmology training simulator, and this is what it looks like. Uh, it looks like it fell out of a gumball machine. Those of us that play video games, this looks like 1999. The entire focus of this product is the eye. Here the eye is an afterthought to make the character a little bit more compelling. And it's not just the technology, okay? These half a million dollar simulators are stuck in these giant sim centers, inaccessible to 90% of the doctors and nurses in the country, and completely inaccessible to doctors in the rest of the world, especially in the developing world. We're very familiar with this model in the video games industry because we abandoned it 30 years ago. <laughs> Everybody plays on the device on their phone. Now, what does this mean? What this means for the doctors and the nurses is what are they practicing on? They practice on live patients, which is why the outcomes of the first 100 cases, procedures, that any doctor or nurse does of any kind, the outcomes are far worse than the next 100. Okay, so how do I know about all this? I come from the video games industry. I also, uh, well, I come from a long line of doctors. Uh, my grandfather was a famous doctor, my parents, all my aunts and uncles, I'm the black sheep of the family, I went into video games. I'm a big embarrassment. Um, and so back in 2012, my father, he's an anesthesiologist, he gives up on me going to medical school and says, Sam, just put all this video game nonsense to good use, make me something to train my colleagues to do a fiber optic intubation. Now, it's this tricky procedure, you only do it rarely, even experienced anesthesiologists struggle with it if they haven't done enough, it's high risk, just make me something to train my colleagues on their iPads. I don't wanna drag anybody to a sim center, so fine. I feel a lot of guilt, so I spend three weekends with some video game technology and I throw a little game together, and it's terrible. And I upload it to the App Store because I'm too busy with my day job to install it on his friend's iPads one by one. Here's the link they can download it, leave me alone. Two years later, he calls me up, Sam, how many people downloaded it? I go, I have no idea how many of your friends downloaded your game, I'll check for you. I went and I looked online and we had 100,000 doctors, nurses, and airway specialists around the world who'd been playing the game, which is ridiculous. And so, at this point, I type it into Google, because it's all unbeknownst to me, and I discover they've done efficacy studies on this at institutions in China and all around the world that show it improved physician performance. All right, so this is interesting. All right, so why is this? Why is this? Okay, because the games industry has developed an incredibly deep discipline over the last three decades and over a billion users, right? tested on a billion players, we figured out the recipe, the neurochemical recipe for changing behavior at scale among any audience, and it's super effective. Uh, case in point, the Obama administration spent years and close to two to three billion dollars to try to stem the obesity epidemic. Um, literally, just get overweight Americans, just get Americans to get up and get off the couch, okay? And go for a walk. Now, all of these meritorious efforts were eclipsed within 48 hours by a single video game that got 40 million Americans up and walking for miles, right? Now, 
This is the power of video games to change behavior at scale. Now, all successful games are doing this. They're not necessarily trying to get you to go and walk around neighborhoods you've never been, but they are getting you to change your behavior, come back every day, invite your friends, change your habits, right? This is what video games are exceedingly good at. There's a reason why all these players can name 100 Pokemon characters, can't point out Switzerland on the map. You're welcome. It's because video games are very good at teaching as an unintended consequence of play. Okay. So at Level X, we're taking the technology, the neuroscience, the distribution model, and we're unleashing it at unsuspecting doctors. So we have a team of 50 game developers who've worked on everything from Mortal Kombat to Diner Dash, and what they're doing is building games for doctors that let you play for free on your iPhone and your, iPad and your uh, Android device worldwide. Okay, so we launched our first product a little over two years ago. In the United States alone, we're now passing over 400,000 healthcare professionals who are playing these games, which includes one in three surgeons in the United States. And because we're so good at disseminating best practices through these video games at scale, we're now working with 10 out of the top 30 pharma and medical device companies, as well as leading medical societies like American Heart Association, American Society of Anesthesiologists, to train doctors and nurses on new techniques, um, improve diagnosis, and teach new skills. So you can't be told, Level X is like the matrix. You can't be told what Level X is. You have to see it for yourself. Um, so now we're going to perform a colonoscopy. <laughs> this is Gastro X, launched about a year and a half ago. You can download it on your phone if you don't believe me. I'm playing this live. Um, so as you can see, these are actual cases that have been submitted by doctors all over the country. Some of these you can see you can actually earn CME credit for. You can earn continuing medical education credit toward, renew toward renewing your license by playing a video game. Uh, so here we are inside the large intestine. If you're squeamish, look away. It's going to get a lot worse. Um, <laughs> So I'm just playing this here on my phone. Now this is not a video, this is a totally interactive virtual patient. What do I mean by that? This patient is squishy, right? I can grab anything anywhere, it all behaves realistically, pull it toward the light, it glows. Yeah, this is running on your phone, that thing that drops calls all the time. So my, the thing I need to do here, right, is I need to find all those precancerous polyps that hide behind folds and, you know, do terrible things. What I don't realize is this is an incredibly rare scenario. It happens maybe once a career. This blood vessel, this uh, polyp embedded on top of a blood vessel. So when I remove it, I trigger a bleed a meter inside the body. So I can come in here with my, with my saline spray. I can try to deal with it, maybe wash that out. But it's really bleeding, and so it just dilutes the blood. It keeps coming back. So now I have a full arsenal of tools here at my disposal. We're going to use the argon plasma coagulator. It's a lightning gun, but it's for real. Doctors actually use this. And I'll cauterize the tissue, and I'll seal the bleed. Objective achieved. And now I can continue to find the remaining polyps that will be flat and hide in all sorts of crevices. You don't want to watch me do that, though. That takes time. So I'm just going to, it's a totally interactive virtual patient. So I can just <laughs> cauterize anywhere. I just keep going. I can do anything. I can inject anywhere until eventually I'll fail the case. <laughs> um, all right, I got lots of other examples, but not a lot of time. So uh, this is an example. This game, actually, they're doing efficacy studies on this now in East Asia. Um, it's actually demonstrated to improve performance for ER docs. Uh, here's an example. Um, they're also using this to train all the anesthesiologists now in Argentina. We just found that out. Um, so I can place a virtual patient here on this couch. Um, yeah, we're live, everybody. Hello. Um, so here he is. Um, and so here, this is training intubation. The challenge is visualizing the vocal cords. So the way I need to do that is by striking what's called the rugby pose, which is this horribly awkward position that I need to stand in as an anesthesiologist in order to maintain visual on the vocal cords long enough to insert my endotracheal tube. Oh, man, this is really hard. And I'm embarrassing myself in front of lots of people. There we go. And so now as I insert my endotracheal tube, here I can try out different devices and learn different techniques. Notice this guy actually casts a shadow on the couch. Um, so here we go. So we'll intubate this guy. Success. Oh, whew, that was stressful. All right. And we can try out different devices and learn about different techniques to do this. Do CPR, place a patient anywhere. I can actually place them on the floor if I want to recreate an emergency scenario, but that's even harder. There we go. Then I got it. Then I have to lay on my stomach. You don't want to watch that. It's terrible. Um, okay. So let's get back to business here. Oh, thank you, PowerPoint. All right. Oh, now we're all the way at the end. Here we go. Demo. Good. All right. 
So as I said, this is already be, being used worldwide, despite the fact that right now it's only available in English. Um, so in short, if you want to find new ways to achieve good in the world, you want to train medical professionals worldwide on new techniques, helping them diagnose rare diseases, disseminating new guidelines, um, we at Level X would love to find a way to work with you. So thank you very much. <laughs>